Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today has been a really interesting day for Rocket Watchers. There's been two big pieces of news. The first news was a, an Office of Inspector General report about the SLS that basically says that it's over budget and delayed. Okay, big surprise, but it's a pretty damning report putting a lot of the blame on Boeing at this time. But the bigger news that really is going to matter is the US Air Force awarded its much anticipated new round of launch service uh, agreements, which basically give money to rocket companies so they can develop the next generation of their boosters. And there were three winners, which we've all talked about previously. First of all, there's the United Launch Alliance, who are developing Vulcan Centaur, and uh, having this, they're getting almost a billion dollars, and they can basically go straight on and start developing this rocket, which you know, should bring it to launch pretty, you know, in a few years' time. Second name is Northrop Grumman, who recently acquired Orbital ATK, and with that they acquired the Omega rocket, which is essentially a bunch of uh, solid rocket boosters strapped together with a hydrogen-fueled upper stage. Finally, and most significantly, the Blue Origin are getting half a billion dollars to develop their new Glenn launch vehicle. And that uh, is pretty interesting. So first of all, Blue Origin have... You know, they've been around longer than SpaceX, but they haven't really ventured into the launch market. What they have done is develop the BE-4 engine, which is going to be used by uh, the Vulcan Centaur. So uh, ULA are using it. And incidentally, Northrop Grumman are also making the solid rocket booster used by uh, the Vulcan. So there's a, a, you know, it's interesting that these three companies actually are sharing technology as it is. But yeah, Blue Origin, they have developed this and they've come up with this huge rocket design called the New Glenn. The Vulcan is gonna use two BE-4 engines. The New Glenn is gonna use seven of them on its first stage. And it's gonna recover its big first stage. It then has a hydrogen upper stage, possibly two hydrogen upper stages, depending upon uh, which version they go for. And yeah, it can loft about as much into orbit as the Falcon Heavy. I mean, you gotta re you gotta really put it in perspective. I think the Falcon Heavy can put more when it's operating in fully expendable mode. But I guess the you know the new Glenn might have advantages at higher velocities, higher C threes or whatever. You know, we haven't really seen the final vehicle, so. It's interesting that this has got the reward because it's going to definitely become a thing in the future. This whole program is really the Air Force wanting to modernize its fleet, in part because they're looking at new technology, but also because the most reliable rocket they've got right now is the Atlas V, and that has this kind of political problem with its engines, which are these amazing RD-180 engines that have been developed by Soviets and sold by Russia. And after the invasion of Crimea, that became a bit of a political hot potato. So um, military launches have been wanting to move away from these engines for a long time. So they gave out some money in 2016 to uh, Aerojet Rocketdyne to develop their AR-1 engine, which is very similar to the RD-180, at least because it's a kerosene closed cycle engine. They also gave money to SpaceX to develop their Raptor and, as an upper stage engine. What is notable is in this new funding round for 2018, SpaceX is nowhere to be seen. Aerojet Rocketdyne is nowhere to be seen, and that's understandable because Aerojet have been unable to find a customer for their AR-1 rocket, but SpaceX, you know, they're still very active. They have military launches lined up, so the fact that they didn't get any money is raising a lot of uh, eyebrows and possibly a lot of conspiracy theories. I mean, there's people that are saying something as simple as well, you know, Elon Musk on the Joe Rogan show basically broke military protocol and therefore can't negotiate or anything. I don't know about that. I think that really what happened was that SpaceX, they have developed the Falcon Heavy already. They've flown the Falcon Heavy. They've proved they can do that. And with that, they can hit every single military orbit. There is a question about fairing size, but I don't think they need a huge amount of money to fix that. So they already have something that the military can use for almost all their requirements. Their other thing they're developing, the BFR, I don't think the military has any interest in that because they don't have any payloads or multiple hundreds of tons. And 
So I think that it really comes down to the fact that SpaceX didn't present anything that was worth getting any more money for under this program. Uh, there is also, there are some people that are arguing that SpaceX are actually heading towards becoming the monopoly, like the default launcher, because they're cheaper than everyone else. And uh, you know, rather than bolster a potential monopoly, the military decided to spread this money around potential competitors to try and keep the launch market uh, competitive. And you know, that's completely valid. Um, as, as it is, I don't see that, uh, I see that SpaceX is going to continue to get launch agreements for the foreseeable future. So we shouldn't be too surprised and we shouldn't read too much into this. I don't think it's going to be the death of SpaceX. But I think the real takeaway from this is that we previously had three rockets that existed largely on paper. Vulcan, New Glenn and uh, Omega. And now these are very likely to proceed through development. You know, the ULA definitely were looking at Vulcan Centaur as their next generation vehicle, but there were some questions of whether Lockheed Martin and Boeing would really put in the money to develop it quickly. Well, having a billion dollars is definitely going to help make their project timelines go a little faster. Uh, again, Omega probably wasn't going to get developed unless they got this kind of money. And, you know, it's using what they or hardware they already have largely. So it's just a question of making sure they can build this thing together. I, I would say that of all the launch vehicles described here, the Omega is easily the most Kerbal since it's just a bunch of parts strapped together. New Glenn is really where the next generation is going. It's re first stage is going to be reusable. It is huge. It's running on methane and it's going to be able to deliver the heaviest payloads of all three options. So if that gets flying, you know, that will be an impressive thing to see, I'm going to say. So look, this is more than just a big pile of money to develop a rocket for military use. This also carries the implicit recommendation of the military. So this will then, of course, enable them to use these launch vehicles for commercial customers. After all, if the military is going to put their expensive top secret hardware on top of a rocket, then commercial customers will be more likely to put their precious satellites on these very same rockets. So not only does getting the money, you know, help them build the rocket, it helps them get potential future customers. So this will, of course, then feed into their whole development cycle. As it stands, you know, SpaceX still are going to be making their cash from their existing launch vehicles. Uh, we don't know where they're going to get money for BFR because that's a whole separate thing. Uh, NASA still currently developing the SLS at this time, but um, yeah, changes have happened. For example, I believe the exploration upper stage is going through a major redesign. So we're not really sure what's going to happen there. We're certainly not going to sure when it's going to fly because one of the parts of the report said that the testing facility won't even be ready until a few months before the launch date. So they're not going to be able to do a full test until they've got no time to fix any problems with the test. And we all know that the first test never goes off perfectly. So expect delays and slippages in the uh, SLS is launch date, but hey, you knew that already. So yeah, fascinating day. Looking forward to see New Glenn and Omega and Vulcan flying and looking forward to see more Falcon Heavy flights. Till then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.